Well, studies say social media could be harmful to your brain for both young people and adults. But why is that? After the break, a neurologist from UC San Diego Medical Center is here to tell us why. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning San Diego. Happy Monday. And I'm sure right now, as you're sitting here watching this, you've got your phone out and you're also doing this, right? Looking at your social media, <laughs> keeping up to date with what's going on, but also listening to the news. So what does all of that information do to your brain? What does social media do to your brain and your health? Our friend neurologist and Dr. Sarah Shiavoshi is here from UC San Diego Medical Center. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, so I think in this day and age, especially with people, young, the younger generation, there is this need to have a phone in your hand and to always have your Facebook up, your Twitter, your Instagram, you're in whatever yeah and what does that do to the brain so uh, there's this whole thought that maybe we're overreacting maybe it's just technophobia maybe we're scared of social media and the internet the same way that we were scared of telephones and and television but I, I think that there is valid cause to be concerned especially about our teenagers so there was a study that uh, went on a few years ago out of UCLA and it studied 32 teenagers and it put them through an fMRI scan or a functional MRI, and it exposed them while they were in the scanner to these very popular images on social media, on Instagram. And while they were in the scanner, they noted that any time a very popular image would pop up, this area in their brain called the nucleus accumbens, which is responsible for reward, it's part of our reward circuitry, mm -hmm. um, would light up and become activated. And whenever your reward circuit is um, activated, there's a rush of dopamine, mm -hmm. which is our feel-good hormone. And it's the hormone that um, is responsible for when you win money, mm -hmm. um, for the high you get when something really exciting happens, or the high you get when someone does a drug like cocaine. Oh my. So, <laughs> okay, so here's the, okay, so let's just, let's just take that piece. What does that mean if it is constantly yes in your system that way because right. that's that's the gratification the constant gratification of social media and images that you like and and messages that you like which we know that's what we're getting on our social media things that we already reinforce what we already like exactly so what is that constant so it do? creates something called this dopamine loop that everyone's talking about now so you get this little rush of dopamine from an image that you like and remember that when you go on social media things are cherry-picked now there's an algorithm you go mm -hmm. on and it's showing you exactly what you want to see. Mm -hmm. So you look at these images, there's this dopamine rush, you feel good, you get this high, and then you want more and more. And whenever you have that dopamine rush, you need more in order to get that same degree of satisfaction. And it's also exactly as you said, instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So if I'm confronted with the things on my to-do list, um, things that are going on in my life that I just don't want to talk about or I don't want to deal with, I can quickly go to social media, go to Instagram, and get this high mm -hmm. that I'm looking for. Let's look at the other side of that because it's not just it's not just positive reinforcement that you're getting on social media. Sometimes there's also some negatives that you start to see that yes. also impact you. And this study is saying that um, the negative impacts and the severity of those negative impacts really are based on your own mental state to begin with. Right, well you're constantly comparing yourself to others, mm -hmm. right? When I'm constantly looking at images of of people's uh, selected good times and not the negatives, it's easy for me to say, wow, I want that. Mm -hmm. I want, because what I see is in front of me. It's in right. my life. I'm not looking at my own Instagram mm -hmm. perfect images constantly, unless, you know, you are, right, <laughs> which right, right. happens, and you live in this alternate reality, but you're looking at everyone else's curated reality of just what the good parts is that they're showing you. Right. So it has a really significant impact on our overall sense of confidence. Confidence, right. Okay. Being. So um, you look at, a, at people's brains all day long. That is what you do. You know, as a neurologist, you see the effects of negative things. You know, negative things to the brain, positive things to the brain. Um, after reading all of these studies, what would you say? about the brain function and social media for your patients. What would you tell your patients? Well, I would say remember that myself as an adult who has a fully formed brain, a fully formed frontal lobe mm -hmm. that is capable of making decisions and judgment calls where I can say, okay, time to put my phone down. My 
child or an adolescent who does not have a fully formed frontal lobe yet mm -hmm. does not have that capability to the degree that I do. And even I find it very difficult to put my phone down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really a struggle. It is. Right? But for a teenager that does not have a fully formed frontal lobe yet to make that judgment call, it is very easy for them to get addicted. Mm -hmm. So there need to be boundaries that are set. Mm -hmm. And we need to find a way to be more responsible for social media yeah. um, in our culture. Right. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a topic a big problem. for another yeah, day. But, exactly. Um, but but you, you really do believe, though, that that social media for teenagers needs to be regulated just just for the pure function of how it affects the brain. I do. And and the hormones that, you know, that dopamine creates in the body. That dopamine loop, yep. Yeah, the loop. Exactly. All right, All right Dr. Sarah Siavoshi, always great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for nice your time. Thank you, too. All right.